I like Apple for a possible pop to the upside. Let's let's do a little playing with Apple here. All right, Take a little tiny position, really tiny here. It's still rather neutral, but what I really like that I'm seeing is the fact that Apple experienced two solid minutes of pure bearishness, solid bearishness, but experience little to no follow through immediately after that bearishness. Okay, whenever that happens, um, I take notice because it tends to be a sign that the bulls are willing to come in and overpower the bears on brief periods of bearishness. So they stop the bears dead in their tracks after a very short period of time. Now, if there's follow through on these red bars, meaning that you have a really solid red bar and then another solid red bar and another solid red bar, the bulls are not strong enough to actually hold the bears in check after a short period of time. So these one solid red bar phenomena that have no more follow through are actually quite interesting. And we're just seeing this drifting activity in a lot of things across the board, indicative of the type of market we're dealing with today. Nice solid volatility in the first uh, five to 10 minutes of trading and going down to a whisper. Now, I'm, I'm short and long, but a very inconsequential amount here on, on Apple. You can get a little pop and collect some change. As you can see, there's a decent amount of resistance up here in the 119 area. See the pop up here and the drop back, pop up to the area, drop back, pop up to the, not 119 as a specific price, but as an area, a decent amount of resistance. So once that resistance clearly goes, if that resistance clearly goes, a nice little pop can, can happen. It could prove that that resistance is formidable enough to cause the bulls to bail and we pop to the downside. I'd actually like to see it pop to the downside first so that I can demonstrate how one potentially builds into a position that you still believe is bullish even though it's dropping. Let's see which scenario we get. Now if we dip back toward these lows, I look to take this really puny position of 1500 shares and actually build it up a little bit more down in the 75 to 80 area, if you will. I'd actually prefer that scenario first because I am rather light with my position. Again, Apple having a tiny bit of trouble at the round number, 119. Again, if 119 is penetrated, not just poked through, but penetrated for real, it should go, which it looks like it's trying to do right now. Okay, now I don't have many shares, so it's not like my p and is going to rip here. I'm up 122 bucks. That's not even dinner. 1,500 shares, see if this thing can be more than just a one bar phenomena above its resistance point. I like these vacuums though. I like these bases of support that are a decent distance below a key major moving average. So you create this vacuum where there's an opportunity for there to be a push up to the next major moving average. I like when you have that distance there. If this were a lot closer, there would be this lack of distance, which wouldn't have me really, really very interested. But we're dealing with a sort of lackluster market here, as you can tell. Most things kind of meandering around. I'll pare it down on my, my apple a little bit here. See if we can get it to push a little higher. 
taken 500 off the table, 500 shares off the table of my 1500 share position. I'm sort of playing around here, you know, it's not the greatest excitement because the size is small, but there's the 15s gone. Okay, so I've closed out the position with, you know, quick 213 bucks. You know, again, and, and most of this is just for demonstration purposes for you. A lot of these things I would be taking um, with much larger size and going for bigger gains, but for the sake of brevity, um, I just like to show you how our professional trader sort of goes back and forth and takes 200, 300 here, 1,000 there, 600 there, 500 there, and pieces together a very nice day for himself.